This is the series where I take your guys' unpopular and controversial opinions about a wide variety of topics and tell you why you're horribly wrong. Or maybe, just maybe, I might agree with you. But in this video, I feel compelled to switch up the formula just a little bit. Without a doubt, the most reoccurring comment is that Origins is bad, or that Origins is overrated, or Origins killed Call of Duty zombies. So I wanted to go through and figure out exactly why you guys feel this way. Is Origins overrated? Let's argue. Origins is not a top tier map. It's really tedious and boring trying to collect staff parts. I can appreciate the map of course and get why people love it, but it's not a top tier map for me. A top tier map would be Mob or Shadows for me. So let me just say that I enjoy the collect-a-thon aspects of Origins. I personally find it really satisfying to go around the map to acquire the different staff parts. And if you think about it, you don't really have to go out of your way to get any of the parts outside of the lightning staff, but that's more of an issue with the uselessness of the tank and less of anything else. To get the ice staff parts, you just need to wait for a snow round, which if you're progressing through the rounds, you won't have to wait that long. The RNG element of acquiring the wind staff parts can make things a little bit annoying, but in all likelihood, you probably should have the wind staff by the fourth or fifth robot cycle anyways. And the fire staff literally builds itself, and you'll pretty much get it without really ever going out of your way. So personally, I just don't see how collecting the staff parts is a problem. Origins is overrated. It's a good map, but the lack of effective fast travel, Templar taking generators out and the tediousness bring the map down a lot for me. It's a fantastic speedrun map because of how complex it is, but even as a hardcore player who has done all the easter eggs, Origins feels overly complicated and too large at times. This one is a pretty solid argument. I mean, my main thoughts when reading this is that yes, Origins would have been way better with a fast travel system. They almost had it figured out with the crazy place and being able to teleport in through one portal and out another, and it could have been a really effective way way to get around the map, similar to the underground area of Shadows of Evil. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that get in the way of this actually being an effective way of traveling. One, you have to walk down a long cave just to access the portal. Two, there's a long wait time for the portal to build when both entering and exiting the crazy place. And three, you have to have the gramophone with you to access the portals, meaning you can't teleport from the ice tunnel to the fire tunnel and then back again. You have to go all the way back to retrieve the gramophone. Templars taking generators out is another fair criticism in that it disrupts the flow of the map and you kind of have to stop whatever you're doing at a given time. But I personally think it's a good thing. Templars are a way to force the player to practice their decision making skills and make the choice on whether saving a generator halfway across the map is worth the potential risk of dying. And don't forget there's also a reward for taking out the Templars when they're on a generator in the form of a free max ammo. But yeah, in summary, I agree that the biggest flaw of Ori Origins is just the lack of a good fast travel system, but at the end of the day, it's not a big enough issue for me personally to stop myself from considering it to be one of the best maps of all time. Origins is extremely overrated. Some of the easter egg steps are way too tedious, especially on solo, and the routine is the exact same every game as you never have to get different weapons. The box is basically useless because you can just use the MP40 or STG until you get the staffs. Okay, so there's three parts to this comment. The first one is that some some of the easter egg steps are too tedious. I'm not really sure which you are talking about because the only one that takes up a considerable amount of time is the first one, acquiring and upgrading the four staffs, which I've already touched on. And then the comment talks about not getting to use different weapons, which I cannot seem to understand at all. There's literally four different elemental staffs, the first time we'd ever seen anything like that in zombies. All four are completely worth using, and depending on whatever mood you're in, you can choose a different one. On top of that, Origins has the most unique set of weaponry in Black Ops 2, from the return of the MP40 to the new MG08 LMG, to a brand new starter pistol, the Mauser, that when upgraded has similar effects to the Ray Gun Mark II, and it's all relatively viable. So I'm not really understanding that part either. And the last part of this comment is that the box is basically useless, which I agree that it is, but I'm here to argue that that's not necessarily a bad thing. Every zombies map sits somewhere on a spectrum where on one side is the maps that the box is completely useless 
Palace. And on the other side are the maps where you have to depend on the box for literally everything. And the maps that make the box obsolete tend to be the better maps. This is because in my opinion, I'd almost always rather have a way to get set up that doesn't depend on me sitting around and spinning the box. I'd much rather have maps set up like Origins where I have a clear path to getting any of the four elemental staffs. All I have to do is go and build it. Rather than maps like Moon or Revelations where the only way to get set up is to hope to get lucky from a mystery box. I do think that there is like a happy medium that I think Cold War actually did pretty well. Whereas yes, you can get any wonder weapon from the box, although it's very unlikely, but there's also some sort of quest that you can do to unlock the wonder weapon. Another example of a time where Treyarch got this balancing right is Shadows of Evil. Yes, the actual wonder weapon is acquired by building it, but if you want to get fully set up, you're probably going to want little Arnie's, and that can only be acquired through the mystery box, giving it at least some purpose. Whereas Origins is a bit extreme where even the G strikes are earned through a process. Anyways, all of that to say that I'm completely okay with the box being relatively useless, because I think that's a much better alternative to the box being something that is overly relied on. Casual maps made to be replayable are just as good as attempts to make the next origins or whatever. It's okay to make a basic map as long as it's replayable. I agree with this, but I think it's very hard to make something that is both casual and replayable. And my question is, where is the replayability coming from? I feel like learning a map like Origins or Shadows or Derizendrock and perfecting the setup and the easter eggs of the map is what makes them replayable. I just don't want something like Cold War where all the maps are super super basic and casual, but not replayable. The only replayability in Cold War comes from grinding out camos, which is not good in my opinion. I think a way that they could do this is by revisiting the transit idea, but actually make it good. Like maybe just have this super big map filled to the brim with difficult Easter eggs and just a ton of things to do, but then also break down the map into smaller areas to make basic, more classic style survival maps. Like if transit itself was actually a good map and had all the survival maps on top of that, I think we'd be looking at Transit as going down as one of, if not the best map of all time. Origin setup takes too long to have fun. If you want to play zombies, a map like Ascension or Nine are the funnest because it's a short and simple process, but not as easy as just flipping a switch. This goes back to me saying that I find it fun to set up on Origins. Like for me, setting up is the most fun thing to do in zombies. And if I just wanted to shoot zombies, I'd go and play a one barrier custom map or something. I never understood why half the zombies community would rather not have content than to have content. Like at a basic level, doing tasks to get a reward is like the basic idea of what a video game is. And as long as the reward is worth the effort and the actual process is fun, then what is there to complain about? In this case, the five minutes it takes to build and upgrade a staff is 100% worth it. Meleeing a few zombies to get the G-Strike is worth it. So I just don't see why everyone seems to prefer less content over more. Origins learning curve is right on the razor's edge of being too hard. The Panzer coming at round 8 is just too early. I never hear anybody mention this. If there ever are complaints about the map, it's about having to collect too much stuff, which I don't mind very much. Black Ops 2 Origins is definitely one of the more difficult zombies maps of all time. But at least for me, getting over that original learning curve is what makes video games fun. Like imagine how unfun it would be to just spawn in with an upgraded gun or something. I think the learning curve itself is the exact thing that makes Origins one of the greatest maps of all time. No matter how good you are at the map, there's always something you can do better or faster. And yes, I still have PTSD from the first time I ever heard the Panzer horn on round 8 before getting sucked in and completely destroyed. But that's a good thing in my opinion. Without a challenge, what even is the point of playing a game in the first place? Origins is overrated and mostly liked because of YouTuber bias. <laughs> I don't know what this means. I'm just imagining in my head that people believing that all YouTubers are like paid off by Treyarch to promote Origins and only Origins. Thank you for watching. Leave a controversial opinion in the comments.